it's Monday, December 7th, 2020. Time to start once again. Time to continue to pursue God with everything that we are. Not only for our well-being and for our growth and our deepening relationship with God, but also, as a reminder from yesterday, for the generations that are coming behind us who need to see men and women living out lives of faith and pursuing and persisting and pushing against the resistance of this world for the glory of God. We are grateful for the generations that came before us, and we need to do the same for the generations that are coming behind us. But this is our Christian heritage. So let's get started. As per usual, this is your invitation for next Sunday. We have another Sunday in our book, and it went very well. I thank all of those that participated, all of those that came out. I do apologize for anyone that missed service due to our transportation issues. We ran a shuttle bus shorter than usual, and that caused uh, Sean's route. He did double duty this week and made two routes, and his earliest route was... Uh, earlier than many of the folks at the hotel were expecting. Dave did his best to get word out as soon as we found out that the shuttle bus, his shuttle bus, was not going to be up and operating. So uh, I'm sorry if we missed you. Make sure that you are calling Dave and making reservations for this coming Sunday. And once again, thank you for all of those who attended as we continue to uh, practice safety protocols and wearing face masks even when we don't feel like it for the safety of our neighbors and keeping uh, each other, and especially those that are coming to church for the very first time, to let them know that we care about them and that we are willing to wear face masks if necessary to keep each other safe. So thank you for participating yesterday, and this is your call uh, to make your reservation for this coming week. have something new for us. And it's something that's a little bit out of the ordinary. It is something that God placed in my heart. I shared with uh, the folks that attended church yesterday, I shared a little bit of where this all came from. But I want to introduce this book to you. It's called Hind's Feet on High Places, and it's by Hannah Hennard. And it was written in the, uh, I guess in the 50s, We'd have to check the copyright date, but she was a, uh, a missionary to Palestine and then to Israel uh, at the reestablishment of Israel in 1948. And she continued to be a missionary for her entire life from that earliest time in 1928 uh, for 50 years and just passed away in 1990. And one of the earliest works of hers was basically her sharing her testimony. And it's in a story format that I think you will enjoy. Uh, I first came across this uh, book when uh, we were traveling with our entire family, back when the children were much younger, and we listened to it as an audio book. And it really helped me grasp my relationship and some of the things that, that uh, we have to work through as Christians and it also, I think, introduces what it is to be a Christian to new believers, to children. It was a perfect uh, story for us all to engage and, and appreciate. And on whatever level we could understand what faith is and what perseverance, we're doing so much talk about hope and we're doing so much talk about pursuing God, even in the times that we, we are weary and tired. I believe that you will enjoy this story. And it seemed fitting for the, the holiday season. It is something that God brought back to my, my mind as I worked through the message on Sunday. So I thought we would take time to share it together. Now, how are we going to do that? That is the complicated part about introducing a book. Well, I have your copy. And I have it right here. Oh, 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 yeah, there it is matches the picture on the, the screen there. This is your copy. Dave will be out doing outreach throughout the week, just as he normally has, visiting both hotel locations, visiting Westgate, 
Uh, for those that may have come across me, if you mention the book and mention seeing the book here as part of uh, the, uh, the morning devotion, ask me for the book and I have 20 copies of them. So that would be the quickest and easiest way to get the book into your hands. It's also available on Amazon and it is available on the Kindle. I was able, uh, I don't know if it's because we are Prime members on Amazon um, and we have a number of Kindles, but I was able to get my latest copy for free. So you might want to check if you're a Prime member, uh, looking it up on, the, uh, on Amazon and seeing if you might be able to get a copy for free. I will be more than happy to purchase if we run out of 20 and I can't, uh, you know, I could not project. I got 20 copies. If we run out of 20 copies, praise God. 20 people engaged in this devotion, 20 people seeking God. I will gladly buy another 20 and make sure that we get it in your hands. Now we're going to out of slow roll today and slow roll it tomorrow so that we can prepare and have it in your hand. And then we'll start this week uh, for the rest of the week uh, hitting more excerpts than perhaps we will in the coming weeks um, so that if you do not have the book, you certainly will be able to follow along in, in the story and in the biblical implications of the story. So that is the goal of the week, is to introduce you to the author today and then uh, continue to introduce the concepts of the, the overarching story. And then by Wednesday, we'll start getting into the first chapter. And hopefully by Friday, we'll finish the first chapter together. If you could tell from the from a quick, uh, it's a very small book. It's a hundred and some pages. So, and it's got really good print for all of us uh, that are uh, challenged uh, with our vision issues. It's got good print. So, should be something that we can all work our way through. And I believe it's a lesson not only for the holiday season, but also going into the new year. So let me introduce you to, to Hannah. First and foremost, where we get this idea of Heinz feet uh, on high places is, well, several places. Uh, first and foremost, out of the Song of Solomon, and she'll mention this in the intro. So I just wanted to give this scripture to you first so that you would have a sense of where the story was inspired from. So out of Song of Solomon, which we covered a few weeks ago as we talked about the love letter between ourselves and God, um, this certainly uh, encapsulates some of the same things that we were talking about then. In verse 8, Listen, my beloved, look, here he comes, leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Now, hinds feet, for those that are tripped up by the, the hinds, uh, that's a type of deer. And depending on the translation that you are looking at, if you're looking at the King James Version of the Bible, then it often will say hind instead of deer or stag. or. Uh, but in this particular uh, passage, I believe it's the same altogether, but we have other passages that we're going to introduce where hinds feet comes directly out of the scripture, and that's where um, it's rooted. But more on that as we get into her story, and I'll let the author introduce herself and introduce uh, some of what inspired the story, and then we'll talk a little bit more towards the end. So this is from the, the dust cover. This is from the back of the book, I believe. And it says, There are no obstacles which the Savior's love cannot overcome. The high places of victory and union with Christ can be reached by learning to accept day by day the actual conditions and tests permitted by God by laying down our own will and accepting His. The lessons of accepting and triumphing over evil, of becoming acquainted with grief and pain, and finding them transformed into something incomparably precious, 
These are the lessons of the allegory in this book. Now, allegory is simply a, a way of telling a story using symbolic uh, uh, you know, characters and uh, the Lion, the Witch of the Wardrobe used allegory uh, most famously for uh, uh, the lion. Um, but if you're familiar with Pilgrim's Progress, is an allegory, is a story written very similar. This book written almost in the same language as you would find in Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, Pilgrim's Progress being much older from the 17, I believe the 1700s, if not the late 1600s, um, but uh, very similar. Now, the perhaps the, the difference of, of this allegory or this story versus Pilgrim's Progress is this is written from the perspective of a believer, someone who has been in relationship with God for a, a period of time, whereas Pilgrim's Progress starts at really the, the very earliest stages of belief. So I thought this would be geared more towards where we are in that we, many of us, not all of us, have a relationship with God, but we're perhaps feeling challenged or feeling that, that there's still more for us to accomplish and we're not sure about how to go about it. And the more we try, the more resistance we feel. So those are some of the themes that we'll discover uh, in, in Hannah's story. A little bit of her testimony and where this is rooted. She says, one morning during the daily Bible reading on our mission compound in Palestine, our little Arab nurse read from the daily light a quotation from the Song of Songs. The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. When asked what the verse meant, she looked up, with a happy smile of understanding and said, it means there are no obstacles which our Savior's love cannot overcome, and that to him, mountains of difficulty are as easy as asphalt roads. Beautiful, beautiful illustration, beautiful uh, way to, to connect God's word to a visual that we can understand and the beginning, the birth of this story that is placed on Hannah's heart of how to explain her challenges and, and her relationship with God and how she began uh, pressing forward deep into a deeper relationship with God. Um, and I think it's very helpful for us. Uh, not, it's a, it's a lighthearted, something that we could share with our children, yet deep enough to where we can grasp a better understanding for ourselves. From the garden at the back of the mission house, at the foot of the Mount Gezerim, we could often watch gazelles bounding up the mountainside, leaping from rock to rock with extraordinary grace and agility. Their motion was one of the most beautiful examples of exultant and apparently effortless ease in the surmounting obstacles which I have ever seen. Okay. So hang on to that. Okay. Again, the oftentimes we learn by by example. We learn by as we said on Sunday, watching others and how they navigate their faith. In this case, we're learning on, on what the, the original authors of the scriptures were, were thinking when they invoked these beautiful imageries. And she saw it firsthand of, of this gazelle just effortly, effortlessly making it across this rough terrain. We're going to see tomorrow that not only does Jesus uh, leap and, and cross this, this difficult terrain, face unsurmountable obstacles or what per we perceive as unsurmountable obstacles and, and has overcome them all, 
but that God invites us into that to develop the same ability to overcome just as he's overcome the world. Hannah lived a very quiet life. I went out searching for other pictures than, than this one to share with you today, and there's really only a few. And that's because she was a, a, a missionary. She was uh, a Quaker, and uh, her parents were very devout, and she didn't really connect with God early on in her younger years by her own testimony. And that changed at age 19 when she finally saw God's hand move. And shortly after, she became a missionary to what will become Israel. But she was there, uh, I believe I misspoke earlier, from 1932, not 1928, 1932 to 1982. So for that 50-year span of time, through their transition from, from Palestine to making room for Israel in the turbulent times that followed, uh, she, was, she was on station. And this story reflects her difficult time. Uh, prior to 19, even you know, beyond 19, she had a terrible stutter and felt very self-conscious. Um, and she had other ailments that also um, you know, made her shrink to the back. And these are the things that she uses. These are the things that God uh, frees her from in her own testimony. And she shares through this story of Heinz feet. And she talks about attaining this, this place that we've talked about that Paul has attained, this, this place where we can, can separate from the world and, and, and be out of its reach, be out of the devil's reach, that the weapons that the devil crafts against us no longer find purchase. And that's the story that, that we're going to share, and that's the story that Hannah wanted to, to teach us. And that's some of what she began to experience. And so the story is very much based off of her testimony. I need to emphasize before we begin the story that I do not want you to be a follower of, of Hannah. I want you to be a follower of Christ. There's much that we can learn from Hannah's testimony and her early experience, and much of what she accomplished. But I also shared in private some of the things um, that, I, that I'm concerned about, and I need to make that clear to you up front, that as Hannah progressed and, and uh, through her, her, her later years, she distorted the doctrine, and she, some of the books that she wrote do not fit and align with God's word as they should. And so this particular book fits very nicely with God's word, and I would not share it otherwise. And as long as we remain focused on God's word and continue to, to take this story and tie it back into God's word, then we will remain solidly on the path that God intended. But we all need to be very careful to not, not raise up and become worshipers of a particular person over worshipers of God. So if you go out and, and search for other things that Anna wrote, again, some of them are, are doctrinally sound. And then there are things towards the end of her life that she began to write about that aren't found in God's Word. Matter of fact, there are things that she talks about in this book that would call out the things that from her later works. As long as we are aware of that, 
then this is a useful tool. And we pray that, that Hannah uh, continued to seek God and his grace and his mercy was upon her. She's in God's hands. But there is much to learn from her early story and from this, this fun allegory that God has blessed us with. So that's where we're going to, to step off today. Again, if you would like a copy of this book, you can find it on, on Amazon. And if you're a Kindle owner, you can download it for yourself. But if you'd like a nice hard copy with big print, this one happens to be yours. Uh, find Dave. Find me. Uh, ask for a copy of Heinz Feet for High Places. And we will we'll make that happen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your creativity. We are seeking a, a, a new study. We were seeking a way to enjoy the Christmas season, to continue to press forward and discover hope in times of despair. And you have blessed us with an adventure, something we can do together. I ask, Lord, that you would bless this study and continue to watch over us and encourage us forward as we seek you in all things. We love you, Lord. We can't do a thing without you. But as you go before us, Lord, we know that we can overcome the world as you will. Lord, please be with our neighbors. Please give us a life that shines brightly for all our neighbors that are away from you, all of our neighbors that haven't yet discovered you, Lord. Draw them to you through the way that we live, the way that we love. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that you made. We thank you, Lord, for the hope that you have kept burning in our hearts as we seek you with all things. All right, see you back here. We'll start getting through uh, a little bit more of the, the preface of the book and ready to launch on Wednesday. So it should give us some time to get the book in your hand uh, prior to, to us moving forward. Meet you back here at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Love you. Miss you.